These are. We've all heard this, I've mentioned it before. We know that our secondary schools here are ranked according to decile. We have decile 1 schools, like we have decile 10 schools, and a whole bunch in the middle. And everybody wants to go to the higher ranked decile school because one gets a better education. And I use this term decile, and I use it as an acronym, but I use it because it's so very important for us to be aware of the connection between your secondary schooling, your secondary school education, and your university education. What you're capable of achieving in university is directly dependent on what you've done at secondary school. Now it's too late for you to think about secondary school for yourselves, but it's not too late for you to think about secondary schools for the rest of the children and young people in this country. And you can make the connection between your decile and your future at university. So I broke this down into, or I'm using this as an acronym. And D, what does D stand for? D stands for discussion. How to succeed at university, how to make university education worthwhile, you need discussion. A lot of you get miffed when your classmates begin to speak. I know this. You can see the rolling of the eyes, the chitter chatter, turning to the Facebook page. I don't want to hear what they have to say. And I think to myself, why would anyone want to come here and just listen to me, to any lecture, monologue about something? We don't actually learn anything from it. As I said to you before, you forget 90% of what you've heard within 30 minutes of hearing it. But you remember 40 to 60% of what you engage. Which means the more you talk about things, the more you understand. Discussion. You had Roland Bartley who's put it, I thought he put it best. He said, no discussion, no university. It's as simple as that. Take yourself out of this monologic mindset and try to aspire to a dialogic mindset where you dialogue about things. Discussion. E. Empathy. Empathy. What is empathy? We hear this word all the time. What is empathy? Being able to identify intellectually. We can't identify emotionally. We haven't experienced that. But being able to identify intellectually with the experiences of others. So I said to you before there were different perspectives. Everyone has different perspectives. And often we scoff at other perspectives. But I'm saying simply, empathize with that person. They have their perspective because of their experiences, because of their emotions, because of their lives. You don't have to agree with it. But you will learn a lot more if you can learn to empathize with them. C. Compassion. What? Compassion? What does that have to do with anything? Well, what is compassion? Compassion is sympathy. Sympathy for someone who has somehow been stricken by some form of misfortune. And I sympathize with them for that misfortune. But I don't simply sympathize. I want to help alleviate their suffering. That is what being compassionate means. I sympathize with how you're suffering, whether it be unemployment, whether it be poverty, whether it be rape, whether it be hunger, whatever it happens to be, I can sympathize with that. And I want to help alleviate that suffering. This is part of university education and should be part of a secondary school education. But C could also stand for something else. C could also stand for courage. What is courage? Courage is a kind of quality a quality of spirit that people possess. And that means that they are willing to tackle, to defy difficulty. Being compassionate is not easy. It requires courage to be compassionate. Because now you have to struggle alongside others who are suffering in ways that you are not yourself. And you're doing that because you empathize with them. And you know that they're going through those tribulations because you've discussed things with them. And how are you going to go about doing this? I 
imagination. You give a paperclip to a five-year-old and ask them, what can you do with this paperclip? Name all the things you can do with this paperclip. And the answers come rolling out, one after the other. Each one, right, more surreal than the next. You ask a 15-year-old, and the number has dropped. Think yourselves, what do we do with a paperclip? Um, I don't know, we attach papers together. <laughs> Our imagination decreases with time. It's a biological thing. You have to find a way to be imaginative. There is quite a bit of apathy when it comes to conformist thinking, <coughs> conformist thought. Why conform? Why do it like everything everyone else is doing? Imagination. Imagination is the lifeblood of humanity. This is what makes us different from animals. We can imagine things. We can imagine something better than what we've got. And then we can struggle towards that end. Decile, we're now at L. Two answers for L. Laughter. Think about it. Amusement, merriment, a kind of lightheartedness. Think how you feel when you're laughing. Why do I insist on telling these jokes? And I often know you're more laughing at me than the jokes. <laughs> There's a lightheartedness. We open up a little bit more. Stimulating certain senses. There's an exercise that I do with other students that I haven't done with you. One thing I do often is I ask students to hold hands. Take a moment and hold hands. And people are really upset and like, what does this mean? What does this mean? You hold hands, you hold hands. And after a while, what? I say, okay, let go. Now we continue the lecture. What was the point in that? Touch. Again, what makes us human? Touching someone else. Tactile. Stimulating that sense. And feeling, this is a person. That's all it is. And education is about people. But then, L is also love. And love not as any kind of emotional bosh, romantic love, the stuff you see in Hollywood. Love and agape love. Agape love, A-G-A-P-E, and agape love. That's a selfless love, a love of humanity. Martha Nussbaum, a philosopher, a legal philosopher, said, love is the only law that matters. And here's another quote on love. At the risk of seeming ridiculous, let me say that the true revolutionary is guided by a great feeling of love. It is impossible to think of a genuine revolutionary lacking this quality. We must strive every day so that this love of living humanity will be transformed into actual deeds, into acts that serve as examples, as a moving force. Anyone know who said that? Anyone? Che. Che Guevara. Revolutionary. Motivated by love. And this brings us to the final one, decile, last one, E. Education. The whole idea of education is to change and improve things. It can't be anything else. Yes, there is vocational training and you learn how to do something different. That's fine. But you're learning to do something different because you want things to be better. And if we think of humans as social beings, we want things to be better, not just for ourselves, but for everyone. And this is the privilege that you have with a university education. You have opportunities to discuss, to empathize, to feel compassion, to be courageous, to be imaginative, to laugh, to love, and to be educated. And I really hope that you take advantage of that education. And you take advantage of that education, not for yourselves, but for all of us. Thank you.